Hello students, after studying about the characteristics of a p-n junction diode that it conduct in forward bias and it, did, it can't conduct in reverse bias, now we are going to apply this property and we'll use this junction diode as a rectifier. This junction diode work as a rectifier and how it works that we are going to study in this video. So first of all, we have to know about the rectifier and the process of rectification. So if we have an AC source and we want to convert it into DC, that means a direct current source, a direct current, then the, this process of conversion is called rectification and the device that is used for the purpose is called rectifier. Hence, the process of converting alternating current that is AC into DC alternating current into direct current is called rectification and the device used for the purpose is called rectifier now the question is why we are using junction diode as a rectifier why junction diode so the reason is the property of junction diode that it is unidirectional is responsible for the use of junction diode as a rectifier so principle of rectifier actually works on this we can also call it as the principle of a rectifier so a pn junction diode if you have a pn junction diode it shows unidirectional nature now by unidirectional we mean it conduct in forward bias and it won't conduct in reverse bias so this unidirectional nature of pn junction diode enables it to be used as a rectifier and that is the only principle of rectifier we are applying here so we can connect this diode in reverse bias or forward bias as per our use whether we want current or whether we don't want current but there are again two types of rectifier that we can get from junction diode these are half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier by half wave rectifier means uh, this type of rectifier transform only half of the signal into the required DC while in case of full wave rectifier it will convert the whole signal whole wave into the direct current that's what it means half wave rectifier and full wave rectifier and it works like when the signal is fed to a diode and the diode is forward bias then it will give us the output and if it is in the negative half cycle if it is reverse bias it doesn't conduct so that's how it work so first we will study about half wave rectifier and then we'll move to full wave rectifier so for half wave rectifier we have the diagram here it consists of a transformer this is the transformer present in the structure of a half wave rectifier a junction diode d a load resistance rl now the primary coil of this transformer is connected to an ac source from where we are getting the input which we want to change okay so the ac input that we are getting we have plotted here this is the voltage at a with respect to time we have plot this and this kind of input we are getting from this source to the primary coil and the secondary coil we have is connected in series with the junction diode the secondary coil is connected in series with the junction diode and the load resistance also now we assume that the diode is ideal so it has infinite resistance during reverse bias and zero resistance during forward bias means if it is forward bias it will conduct thoroughly and if it is reverse bias it won't conduct at all this we are considering now let's move to its working so when this ac supplied this ac is supplied to the primary coil the secondary coil of the transformer supplies 
desired alternative voltage across A and B. So we have applied voltage across this coil and from this coil, the secondary coil get the voltage and it will supply the voltage to points A and B from which we can see whether this diode is forward bias or reverse bias. So let's start the process. Suppose first of all, we have the positive half cycle of AC. So we have first positive half cycle of AC. At that time, the end A we are getting is positive and the end B we are getting is negative. During the first half cycle, A is positive and B is negative. And since A is negative and connected to the P side and B is negative and connected to the N side, the positive terminal A is connected to the P side and negative terminal is connected to the N side. That means this diode during that time, during that half positive half cycle is forward bias and will give us the output across RL. So during this positive half cycle, we are going to get output at RL that we have shown here. Now, after this positive half cycle, we get the negative half cycle. And when we get this negative half cycle from input, the polarity changes, A become negative and B become positive. Now, since A is negative connected to P, B is positive connected to N. That means now the diode is reverse biased. And since the diode is reverse biased, it will conduct no current. So we won't get any output here. There is no output during this cycle. Okay, again, when we get positive half cycle, the polarity changes A positive, B negative, and this diode again become forward bias and will conduct and give us the current I in the circuit and the voltage drop across the resistance will be I into RL that we get as the output here. So whenever we are getting positive half cycle, we are getting voltage drop across RL as the current is flowing through it and its value is IRL. So we are getting the DC that is the direct current that is the output across RL. But when we are getting negative half cycle, there is no voltage drop, no output. That means the resultant wave or the resultant voltage we are getting is only in unidirection, only in one direction that is the positive half cycles. So that's how we can convert this whole AC into DC. Since the voltage we are getting is only for the positive half cycle, that means half of the wave, half of the input is giving us uh, output. That's why we call this process as half wave rectification and the arrangement as half wave rectifier. The difference is that uh, for initially we have the whole AC, but we are getting DC only for these positive halves, not for negative halves. That's why we are considering this process as half wave rectification and the arrangement for it we are using is called half wave rectifier. So that's how the half wave rectifier work. Now let's move to the full wave rectifier. So here is the diagram for full wave rectifier. The major changes that we have from half wave rectifier to full wave rectifier are in this case we are going to use two diodes D1 and D2. And the structure that we have is of center tape, means the transformer is not the normal transformer, it is a center taped transformer connected to the diodes D1 and D2 and this is the AC input source and the output that we are getting is across RL at points X and Y, across the two points X and Y we are getting the output. So a full wave rectifier consists of a transformer the two junction diodes D1 and D2 and a load resistance RL. The input AC signal is fed to the primary coil similar to that of half wave rectifier. And the two ends A and B of the secondary coil are connected to the P ends of the diode. These A and B are connected to the P ends of the diode D1 and D2 and the secondary coil. The secondary coil is center taped at the center point T. This is the central point T, the secondary coil is center taped, has central point T, which is connected to the negative ends of both diodes, right? This central point is connected to both diodes, N ends of both diodes across the load resistance RL. It contains the load resistance RL through it. Now, if we have any instant, the voltage at point A and the voltage at point B that are the ends of D1 and D2, at any instant, these are 
out of phase with respect to the center tip okay so these voltages at any instant are out of phase with the with respect to the center tip now suppose that during the positive half cycle of ac input during the positive half cycle of ac input and a is positive this and a is positive and and b is negative so if the and a is positive and and b is negative with respect to the center tip then the diode d1 is getting forward bias because p is connected to positive and diode d2 is getting the reverse bias so we get the current in the circuit but it is because of the d1 only that means during the positive half cycle this diode d1 will conduct the current like this and we get the output across rl now after the phase reversal or when we have the negative half cycle this a become negative and b become positive and the process switch so now in this case when the b is positive d2 conducts because d2 is in forward bias while d1 becomes reverse bias so d1 won't conduct in this case while d2 will conduct and we get the current in this direction across the diode d2 that is the forward bias direction and current flows from p to n current always flows from p to n and we get the output across rl and the output in both cases is in the same phase so the output that we are getting is in the same phase this shows that the voltage at a during the positive half cycle voltage at a is positive right and voltage at b is negative during the first half cycle but we are getting current according to this positive cycle because the diode which is connected to the positive half cycle diode d1 that is conducting that is in forward bias that we are getting current in the output like this in the next half cycle the voltage at a becomes negative while the voltage at b becomes positive but now again we are getting current because of the diode d2 we are getting current because of the diode d2 that means the current phase will be similar to this so again we get the current in the same direction that is the positive direction similar manner if we move forward in the similar manner during the positive half cycle at a and negative half cycle at b the diode d2 will be reverse bias and d1 will conduct because d1 is forward bias and we get the current like this so what we conclude is the whole wave that we are applying to the transformer is giving us current in the same phase that means once we get the current from d1 next we get the current from d2 but the phase of output voltage remains same thoroughly that means this this was ac this was also ac but the output we get is direct current dc this we get due to d1 this is due to d2 at this time d1 was not conducting again we get it from d1 similar in the similar manner the next we get from d2 and so on since the full wave is rectified during this process there is no gap or either it is positive half cycle or it is negative half cycle we are getting the output the full wave is rectifying here that's why we call this process as full wave rectification and the device that we are using here the rectifier that we are using here is called full wave rectifier so that's how we can use a junction diode as a rectifier either half wave or full wave as per our requirement so that's all for the video for further videos stay tuned and keep studying thank you